So helical antennas. Let's design one, build one, and see how we can use it in rocketry. So in this three-part series, I thought we would do things a bit differently. First, we'll be looking at the helical antenna and how to build one with all the files and stuff available. The second part of this video, we'll actually look at rocketry and how different antennas get affected by different mounting structures, different mounting orientations, and why one of these antennas is actually one of the better choices you can make. And then lastly, in part three of the, of the series, we will actually look at how to make one of these antennas and what to consider when mounting it inside the rocket. Let's get started. So if you go to Google and you type in helical calculators, there's quite a few of them available. This is the one I prefer to use as it gives you all the dimensions as well as a impedance transformer that you can make out of copper foil. So for the purposes of our video, we're going to make it out of 915 megahertz and a three-tone helical, which we'll discuss later in the video. And what's nice about this calculator is it actually gives you the dimensions in metric systems. And from here, you can directly design your helical antenna in your favorite CAD program. For me, that is on shape. So you, as you can see here is the impedance transformer as well as the helical diameter. So what I've done here is just create a 3D printable multi-part design that we can use to develop and print our own antenna. So these files are available in Thingiverse as well as the link in the find description below the video for you to print these parts. And the nice thing about this design is the turns can be printed individually so you can decide how many turns you want. So to start off with, we collect all of the pop components once they've all been printed. You've got a base, you've got the three helical turns, and you've got a protection or a bump cover. First off, we start with the backplate. And I've always found that to make a cheap backplate, especially for prototypes, cardboard does a wonderful thing, especially if you just cover it in tinfoil or even aluminium tape. So what I'm doing here is very crudely cutting out the dimensions of the reflector as to what the online calculator said. And eventually I'll do this out of a proper aluminium laser cut plate. Um, if you guys are interested in this sort of thing as a kit, let me know in the comments below. But for now and prototyping, this is perfectly adequate. If you want to protect the copper tape, all you can do is just simply spray paint it afterwards with a oil-based or a acrylic-based um, paint. And that'll protect it a bit of the, the elements if you want to put it outside. For me, this antenna is just going to be used inside now for prototypes. And like I said, if I wanted to build it properly for outside use, like I would do for rocketry, I'm going to get the plate laser cut. So all you want to do is just solder across the joints of the tape just to make sure you've got a good electrical connection. And you can do this across the entire surface. Very little solder is needed, very little heat, otherwise you burn the cardboard. Next, just using a multimeter, checking the continuity as well as the resistance. You can see I'm sitting at 0.4 ohms, which is good enough for what we're going to do. Then we use the base just to center it more or less and then poke holes in the reflector so we know where to mount our device and our N-type connector. After mounting it properly or aligning it to the holes, all we do is use some, again, copper tape to keep it secure as well as make sure we have a proper electrical connection between the two. So all I'm doing here is cheating a bit, putting it in the right place, right orientation, sticking the copper tape over it and then using the carpet knife to just cut away the uh, tape from the central conductor so to make sure we don't have any shorts. And again, this is just the cheese I found to make it as quick and fast as possible. Once the base is mounted, um, you'll see that we actually use four screws to screw through the connector into the plastic base and that forms a nice secure mounting system. see it over there and then just the four screws tightening it down there we have our base so the next step would be to actually start looking at the impedance transformer and what's nice about this impedance transformer is it's just a piece of copper tape that's the right geometry and you can very easily tune this and i've always found that these sort of passive impedance transformers is a lot more efficient than any sort of circuitry that you could use in you know, like a pi, pi circuit or anything like that um, if you have any better suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to look at these sort of things. 
this is just one of the methods I've found so far that's best and that specific calculator tells you more or less what size. So this did work later on and you'll see why but we had to tune it a bit and I've got a funny suspicion it's due to the dielectric loading or the capacitive loading of the plastic on the copper foil. Not a big deal, um, that's why we need to tune and that's also why I recommend always to have your own VNA or Vector Network Analyzer. They're cheap enough these days that you can have one at home and test your antennas, which is very important if you are semi-serious about any sort of antenna design. So there's our three helical turns as mentioned. You can print these as many as you want if you want a helical antenna with a higher gain. Just remember the higher the gain, the lower the beam, which means that your area of interest is narrowed. So it's quite difficult to line it up to where you want to um, transmit or receive most of your signal. So I just use CA glue. Um, it's quick and fast, although I do almost stick the entire device to the table here. You'll see in a minute why right there. Unfortunately, it didn't pay attention and stuck it down. Luckily, noticed it fast enough before I stuck something back into that hole again. Just cleaning it up a bit. The nice thing about this sort of thick CA glue is it does well for filling up gaps and, and holes and forms a nice strong seal. So there you have it. Give it a quick kicker and off you go. Now, like an idiot, I forgot to press record while I was wrapping the copper coil, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory as to how to wrap the wire around the ribs of the helical turns. Next what we had to do was actually solder the copper joints onto the connector. A bit of flux, a bit of loop, you know, it always well, we can never have not have enough. Just solder that in there, make sure it's a proper connection and then off to the other side as well because on the other side is actually a bit more difficult. Burnt my fingers quite a few times doing that but overall it's really easy to achieve. And what I've actually ended up using here after burning my fingers for the first time was a tweezer to hold the copper wire in place. And should have done this in the first place, but you know, you always have to learn the hard way. And there you have it. A helical antenna, almost 100% 3D printed. Um, I could have printed the, the reflector and cop copied that in, in copper tape, but I really just get away with cheaper materials where you can. So on to testing. So we hooked it up to a VNA. The VNA was already calibrated and lo and behold, I think everybody has felt this before. If you put it on the first time, you really hope and joy that it would resonate at the right frequency and your beans matches right. But as per usual, that's hardly ever the case. We had a resonant frequency of around 960 megahertz. And like I mentioned, that's probably due to the capacitive loadings of the plastic on the um, impedance transformer. And through a bit of tuning and testing, what I found actually was just another piece of copper tape stuck right at the end, which I'm assuming just loads a bit of capacitance onto that line. I got the device actually to resonate at the right frequency of around 900. Now we aim for 905. 900 is more than enough since this antenna has quite a large bandwidth. So more than happy with that. Um, as you can see here, I just applied some filtering to make the graph a bit more smooth. But there you have it. We're sitting at a reflection point magnitude of minus 40, which is pretty good for a homemade attempt antenna, especially the first attempt. And if we go to the Smith chart, you can see that we are fairly well matched. And there you go. So if we go to the VSWR and we look around there, you can see we're pretty well below the 1.2 mark across the entire section there. So this antenna should be a very, really, really well matched for efficiency purposes of transmission around that mark. And so there you have it. I don't think for the first attempt this came out too bad. If you have any comments, any suggestions as to what you might want to change, Feel free, the files are, as per usual, is in my Thingiverse page. Drop a comment below, I'd like to hear from you. If this is the type of content that you actually like, please consider subscribing. There's many, much more of this to come. So I hope to see you for part two of the video and then part three. And then we'll probably do some range testing as well, just to validate what we theorize the performance might be for one of these antennas. 
So until next time, cheers.